Okay, the first thing we're going to do is establish a scale relationship between the Unreal Engine and also Maya. In order to do that, we're going to start a brand new project inside of Unreal. And in order to get this launcher that you see here, you want to go to a web browser and you want to look for and search for the Unreal Engine and do a download. So get the latest version of the launcher. Um, by the time this video changes, this launcher changes quite a bit. Um, but you can see I've got here in library and you can add your different engine versions. So the latest one that I've got right now is this, this 4.21. What you want to know is that there are some preview versions of the engines and you probably don't want the preview version. That's the one that's currently in development and there's maybe some experimental things going on with it. So get the latest uh, stable build that you have. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and click this launch Unreal Engine. Uh, if you've got multiple versions of the engine, you can choose that one. So I'm going to choose the latest one that I've got and just click launch. And you can see that after we do this, it's going to launch the Unreal Engine. And whenever this loads up, we're going to have a new um, kind of panel that will let us be able to select a project that we've got. So if you've got an older project and you open it in the newer engine, it'll try to convert it over for you, which is kind of cool. But we're going to go to new project area. And what we're going to use is a third person template. And you can see that we've got the uh, desktop console, we've got maximum quality, and yours probably says with starter content. I'm going to choose that to say no starter content. Um, you can have that on if you want. It'll just make your, your uh, project a bit bigger because it's going to have some example content for particles and textures and materials and things like that, right? Um, so I'm going to call this project uh, game, I'm going to call it uh, game asset creation. 101 like that and I'm just click create project and it'll take a little bit of time to go through and copy all the files over that it needs to copy over and it should automatically load the project for you up and you'll see that you're going to be in this third person uh, version of the, the game so it's kind of cool we can just click play immediately and you can go and run around with WASD like this and you can hit the space bar to jump, stuff like that. And to go out of this, you just hit escape. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to grab this mannequin that you see here. So we can grab him here. And he's actually a blueprint. So that's um, their visual scripting language that they have where you can make actors and you can make all kinds of cool stuff with blueprints. But in this case, it's the uh, third person character. So to find stuff in their... Um, their content browser. Um, this is a cool feature where if you select something in the world and you hit control B, it'll automatically take you to that. So it's going to take you to this blueprint. If you double click on it, you can load this thing up. And basically what I want to get to is this viewport area. So you can see all the stuff that makes up this blueprint. You can even see the event graph for the different commands for jumping and touch input and all this stuff, right? What we care about is getting the skeletal mesh out of here. So if I uh, click on the character here, you can see over here in this area in the details panel, we can see this SK mannequin. So we can hit the little um, eyeglass here and that'll take us to that in the content browser. Maybe you saw that kind of jump over here and kind of change. And so here it sits. So I did all that just so I could find the skeletal mesh. So we can select it, right click and say asset actions and we're gonna export. So you're probably going to want to have a place uh, for your project where you're going to kind of keep everything. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and navigate to a particular area where I've got stuff that I'm keeping things. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to training videos and this FBX. And I'll just keep this as the SK mannequin. Keep it exactly the same that we've got here and hit save. And you can choose your different version of the FBX that you want. I'm going to go ahead and click export. So I'm going to export that out. The next thing I'm going to do is hop on over to Maya. So I'm going to go click and load up Maya. And I've got a fresh new scene uh, ready to go here. I'll turn on anti-aliasing to make this look a little bit nicer. And I'm going to go say file, import. I'll do option box. And I'll choose the FBX as the import type. Let's go ahead and say import, and then um, you can navigate to wherever the uh, mannequin is that where you put it at. So I'm just going to click here and say import, and it should throw it right into the scene. 
Now what I want to tell you is about how I like to set up the grid to kind of have this kind of look that you see here and kind of give us uh, some more information about things. So this mannequin is really about uh, six feet tall. Um, in centimeters, if you make a cube, if you go create polygon primitives and do cube and you do width and height and depth 182 by 182 by 182, that's the centimeters for about six feet. So if we pull this thing up here like this and put it at like 91, you can see the top of his head is just going to uh, almost the top of that cube. And we've raised the cube up and we've got it sitting on the floor. So that's right about six feet for this character. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do now is I've got this... Uh, this reference in here like this we can select it and hit control H to hide it um, if you do that it's gonna hide the object if you want to bring it back you can hit shift H but an easier way to do this is with the layers over here so with it selected you can just click this make a new layer icon and click that we'll double click this to change the name to uh, scale ref underscore and then we'll keep the word layer and get rid of one on there and hit enter or hit, click save and if we can easily turn this thing on or off and now we can click and make it a template view a reference view which is visible but you can't select it or uh, if you turn it off you've got it to where you can actually select this here so we've got an easy way to turn on and off our reference now getting back to this uh, kind of grid and how the grid is kind of set up let's talk about that we're gonna go to display and we're gonna go to grid and we're gonna go to the option box and then load this up so you can see these are the options that I kind of like to use this length and width is this 200 units and it's how far out is it gonna push this uh, where you view this inside of the perspective view and then grid lines every 100 units uh, so that's going to be one meter for one of these bigger giant units like you see here. And then I put the subdivisions to 10 so we can uh, basically see that within um, one, one meter that we've got uh, these smaller increments of counting by 10 within there. Um, I like to have the axis red. Um, I like to have the grid lines and numbers be this kind of darker uh, color that you see here. And then the subdivision lines this here. And here's all the different options for turning those on and you can hit apply. Um, you can also save the settings for that. So, um, you know, every time you load up my, you're going to be able to have this grid kind of set up in this particular way. So um, that's a way for us to start our project off, get a scale reference in here, get our grid set up and have some working units that work between both an Unreal and Maya and getting predictable results.